This is Twit. Line two, Dom, Mission Viejo, California. Hello, Dom. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Hey, Leo. So I'm thinking about putting um, a TV in my backyard. So I need to <laughs> up my up my Wi-Fi. <laughs> a TV yeah. in your backyard. Is it going to be a projector or is it going to be a uh, just a big screen that's in sheltered a sheltered area or? Yeah, just just a flat screen that I'm going to. I have a pergola in the back of my house. I was nice. going to mount the flat screen to it, and I was going to use the internet instead of putting a cable yes. line to it. So you know, my Wi-Fi in the backyard isn't all that great. So I went to Costco uh, last week and I picked up the Google Wi-Fi, the mesh system. Okay. And and hooked that up. And just a really simple question. This is just, and, and the Wi-Fi works great. And, was, and and I recommend it, by the way. I just, it, it's really increased the uh, the speed of my house. Mesh is a big when, improvement for almost everybody, yeah. When you're testing, doing the speed test, and this is the geek part of me, it seems like every test I use, whether it's the test that comes with the Wi-Fi system itself or whether you go to the Google, um, you know, the search engine or if you use another... It seems like the numbers are always different. Yeah. You never really know what the reading is, yeah. the ups and the downs. Right. How do you get a true reading of the speed? I, and again, I am getting good speed. I just would love to know oh, what yeah. it is. You want a number. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and of course, your internet service provider gives you a number. But if you read carefully, there's a little tiny, right next to the 100 megabits is a number, a word, two words, up to that tell you what they're giving you is the maximum possible. They're not guaranteeing that. They're not even saying you're going to get that. It just may be as fast as. So that's the first thing to understand, and that's why people do speed test. So let me. This is a. This is, question has a lot of factors to it, and in fact, it's been even more complicated by your choice of Wi-Fi router. And I'll explain that at the end. The, the of course, the first thing is your internet service provider, especially if you're on cable, is inconsistent. Uh, this is less true on DSL if you're on a phone line. And this comes back to what that, that wire that's coming into your house is connected to. At whatever point it's, con it's connected to the broader internet. So if you think about your internet service provider, let's say they have a big tube that is their total internet access coming into their premises. And then they connect it to a switch which divvies it out to all the customers. You, all the customers, are, are dividing that big tube into little amounts. And it will fluctuate if they have so many customers that one or two or a hundred customers can bring the total down. You know, if they're such bandwidth hogs that they use up more than half of the big tube, you're going to get less. It's less of a problem on DSL because in most cases, DSL is coming from the switch at the phone company and they have more bandwidth you're not impacted by your neighborhood you're impacted by the total usage on that central office cable modems the way they work is they have a backhaul that comes down to a box that's in your neighborhood and you're so that's a smaller amount than the big tube that the cable company's getting and that smaller amount is shared by you and your neighbors. And your neighbors are usually around 100 people. So you will notice that your bandwidth goes down, for instance, especially on a cable modem. It's, it could go up down on a, a DSL as well, but mostly it doesn't because telcos have big pipes. And statistically, it's more evenly shared because more people are sh connected to that main switch. With, with you, if you have a bandwidth hog next door or you have, let's say you have a neighbor next door with three teenagers... And all three teenagers are watching YouTube and your neighbor's watching Netflix. They're drawing a lot of bandwidth. And that's why most homes in cable neighborhoods notice a drop in bandwidth around 6 o'clock at night. Six or, prime time viewing. Because people are streaming. And cable companies don't really up the amount of bandwidth to that head end near you. They, they have a kind of a single amount that they're pumping in there. And so you're dividing it more up uh, at night. So you will notice that fluctuation. So that's one cause of fluctuations, 
literally fluctuation in available bandwidth from the internet service provider. The next thing that happens, of course, is in your own home, and it's exactly the same problem, but locally, you've got one pipe coming into your home, and then if you've got three teenagers watching YouTube, good luck getting high speed because you're dividing your total amount up by those people. There's an, another thing that can impact the speed, and that's the speed of the device you're using. Internet, uh, mostly these days, comes from Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi radios in your phone, laptops, other devices are not all made equal. Some are better than others. Some are faster than others. And so you may find you've got two phones in front of you, and one's Android, one's iOS, and the speeds are dramatically different. That's the hardware. Or the operating system. Both can have an impact on it. So uh, a Mac laptop might get different speeds than a Windows laptop. The hardware in the Windows laptop, the Wi-Fi hardware might be different. That is less of a problem when you're physically connected by a wire, Ethernet wire. But most people are on Wi-Fi. Now you're adding, and this is the last piece of the puzzle, puzzle mesh. And one thing that I, all mesh devices claim to do, some do more than others, is bandwidth shaping. So your Google Home is supposed to be, and I don't frankly know if Google does this or not. Uh, I know some do. My Eero does it, for instance. That's another mesh company. Watch what's going on. And it says, oh, you know, <laughs> right now, uh, Dom's using just getting email. So give him three megabits because... In the other room, his wife is watching a, a UHD uh, uh, Netflix movie. She needs 25 megabits to watch that. So it's bandwidth shaping, and it literally is it, because it knows this is why mesh is better. One of the reasons mesh is better, it knows what devices are on there, and it's constantly shaping the bandwidth to each device to accommodate the device's needs. So when you run a speed test, it may, you know, it'll vary depending on what other people in the house are doing, not only because they're all sharing the same amount of bandwidth, but because your, your mesh modem may also be saying, no, no, I see you running speed test. I'm not going to let you buffer your wife's movie. That would be wrong. So all of this makes it very hard to get a single number. I'll tell you what I would recommend. If you want to get a sense, all you're ever going to do is get a sense, is you do the test at multiple times throughout the day, uh, and you probably want to uh, use different servers. So there's speedtest.net. There's an app for that. There's a website. Uh, but there are other speed tests out there. I like Broadband Reports has one uh, that's very good. You can use that as well. And then Netflix has its own test that is actually a test of how well you connect to Netflix servers directly. That's at fast.com. So I would do speedtest.net, fast.com, and broadbandreports.com. That's three different tests, three different servers. None of them will give you the same number, <clears throat> and it will vary depending on time of day, but at least you'll be able to get an idea of the shape of what's going on. And that's useful. There's other factors, by the way, than just download and upload speed. There's download speed is the most important one. Upload speed is relevant, though, because one of the things that happens when you're uploading data to the Internet uh, your each packet you upload needs a packet from the download saying, I got it, next one. And it's easy to saturate your upload and make downloads impossible. <laughs> so even if you so even if you're only uploading a little bit, it can actually make your downloads much, much slower. So that's another factor. Um, and so look at downloads. You should also look at latency, which is the amount of time it takes to send a single packet to the server and back. That's important. High latency means bad voice over the internet, bad gaming. And then there's something called jitter, which is like latency that will also impact voice over the internet. All of these factors make a picture of your internet access. In other words, that number that the company's given you, you get 100 megabits down. It's basically meaningless. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.